Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how we created a very powerful recommendation engine directly in Neo4j. It's based on a very simple approach called the naive Bayesian classification approach and it yields results and that's what I'm most excited about similar to a deep neural network classifier. Now even though the approach is so simple and we can implement it in a handful lines of cipher we get results as such a sophisticated model which we cannot explain intuitively. Now in this video I'm going to show you everything. We start with a short explanation of the domain. I'm going to keep it short because you're not here for that. Secondly, I'm going to show you how the naive Bayesian classification works, the approach and the assumptions. And thirdly, I will walk you through the query step by step which yields the query which we are having running live in production in our product. Now I'm excited, there's a lot to learn, let's get started. Now to have a working example for the rest of this video, I would like to introduce you briefly to the domain in this case DayCaptain. DayCaptain is a personal time planning tool which essentially allows you to organize your days in tasks and events and you can assign live areas to these tasks and events so that you can categorize them for filtering and statistics and coloring in the front end. My life areas, for example, are um, family and friends, sports and health, consulting, day captain, and so on. You get the idea. But that's not so important. The important thing is our recommendation engine is supposed to predict these areas based on the string that the user types as the title for a task and event in the front end. Now, for the rest of the video, I will use only tasks and leave the part out with the events, but it's essentially the same. Now let's have a look at the data model, how this is modeled in our graph database. I constructed a small example in my Neo4j and in the middle here you see the nodes which are tasks and their primary feature is their title which you can see down here. So this task essentially has a title Neo4j recommendations blog post, um, Neo4j workshop, Neo4j prepare workshop, prepare salsa workshop and prepare salsa class. And as you can see, these tasks, they link to the area, which are the gray nodes here on the right. So these Neo4j related tasks, they relate to my area consulting, whereas the salsa related um, tasks here um, are linked to the area skills. And on the left, you can see, we also have some basic preparation step, which basically tokenizes this title here and also creates links to the tokens, which are stemmed words that are used by the title. Now you can see here the orange nodes, these are the stemmed words. So these three tasks, they use the term Neo4j. So they all have a link to the token Neo4j. And that's basically the data model. And based on this example, we are going to walk through the naive Bayesian classifier in the next step. Now let's have a look at how the naive Bayesian classifier works. From our example on the right here, we can easily construct such an assignment matrix. In the columns, we have the areas, for ex um, in this case, consulting and skills, and in the rows, we have the tokens. The numbers in the middle are the assignments of um, tokens to areas. For example, the token Neo4j is assigned three times to the area consulting, but zero times to the area skills. In total, we have three assignments. The area consulting has in total nine assignments um, out of total 14. So in total we have 14 assignments, which is the sum of this column or of this row. So these are all assignments in our graph. Now using this table, we can easily um, find some basic probabilities. For example, the highlighted Neo4j and consulting probability. So this small character here is the uh, end sign in a probability. So this would be the probability for seeing Neo4j and consulting, which is three over 14. So three assignments are Neo4j in the area consulting over 14 total assignments. Secondly, we can also calculate conditional probabilities. So for example, given the area consulting, what's the probability for seeing the term Neo4j? And that would be given we select only the red area, which is a subset of the total assignments, but only the red ones. And then we select Neo4j. So we have three over nine is our probability for seeing the term Neo4j given the area consulting. So that would be 0.33. Thirdly, we can also do the reverse. So for example, given term Neo4j, what's the probability for seeing area consulting? So the user types Neo4j, what's the probability for seeing each of the areas. 
In this case, we select only the green area, so we have three assignments in consulting and zero assignment in skills. So the probability for seeing Neo4j, uh, for seeing consulting given Neo4j is 3 over 3 because only the 3 here is selected, not the 14, not the 9, but only this row is selected. So we have 3 of 3, which is a probability of 1. And for skills, it would be 0 over 3, which is a probability of 0. Now having this, we can conclude with the naive Bayesian classification approach. The question, the question we ask is, what's the probability for a area, for example, a consulting, given that the user types two tokens in the front end? So he would write Neo4j and workshop, and we are searching for, for the probability of seeing area consulting, given that the user typed Neo4j and workshop. And the naive Bayesian classification assumption is that these two tokens are independent, which makes the math much more easier. What we're calculating is not directly a probability, but rather a score, because we leave out some denominator here, which would be constant for our two tokens. The classification formula is then we take the probability for, a, for, a area, for an area, for example, consulting, and we multiply it with the conditional probabilities of seeing Neo4j given consulting and workshop given consulting. And we basically create a product out of that. Now, if we plug in the numbers, we would get for P consulting, so the probability for area consulting would be basically this nine over 14, because nine assignments out of 14 are in the area consulting, times the probability for seeing Neo4j given consulting. So we select the consulting column and take the probability for seeing Neo4j, which is 3 over 9. And then we uh, multiply with the probability for seeing um, token workshop given area consulting. And that would be 2 over 9, because workshop has two assignments in the area consulting. And that leads, leads us to the final result of 0 0.047 as the probability of seeing area consulting given our two tokens. And that's exactly how we implemented this naive Bayesian classifier in Neo4j and Cypher. And the next step is to walk you through the query so you can reproduce it yourself. All right, as promised, I'm going to walk you through the query that we are running live in our backend every time the user interacts with the front end and starts to type a title for a task. And I'm going to walk you through some basic steps because what the query does is basically only finding some numbers as we saw in the previous slides that we need to calculate the probabilities which we in turn need to calculate the score for each area so in the end we can rank them by the score and and return the most likely area and here's also a short side note because as we have a small and limited input context which are the tokens the user types we can analyze the context of these nodes very, very quickly and therefore find the results without the need for having any uh, pre-processing steps or intermediate goals, which we had to do, for example, in um, relational data. But here we can analyze the context very quickly and that's why we can run this query in real time as the user interacts in the first place. All right, enough of the writing, let's get to the code. All right, let's get started. So in the very first line here, we would simulate the user input as a parameter. In this case, the user typed workshop and Neo4j and we pass it into the query as the param token list. Now, as, as I said previously, we need to calculate some counts and that's what we do in this query step by step. In the first step, we would calculate or count the total number of assignments between um, tasks and annotated tokens, so the total usage of tokens. So what we basically do is count the number of hashtag edges, which are all assignments, and that would be the number in the lower right corner in our table that we have seen previously. In the second step, we would find the areas that are potential candidates for the token the user has provided, because we don't need to look at all the areas, but only the ones that these tokens have previously been assigned to. Now here in this step two, we find the tokens in the graph by with this uh, were statement and then match from there over the task to all areas. In the result, we get a distinct areas. So we take the distinct areas. So we get one line for each area 
um, so we only have one line, uh, two lines in our result for our example, which would be the areas consulting and skills, because that's the areas these tokens have been used to. In the third step, we calculate the size of each of the areas. Um, that's the number we would need to calculate the probability for seeing each area. So that would be, for example, uh, for the area consulting would be nine. And the probability for area consulting would be 9 over 14. And 14 is the number we calculated earlier. And with this number, we can calculate the probability for seeing each area, which is our prior probability, because it wouldn't take into account which tokens the user has typed, but rather it would be just the probability for seeing an area regardless of the tokens. So in this, in this case, we match from the areas to all annotated tokens. And for each area, so for each row in our result, we would get a count area, which is the size of the area. In step four, we want to count the assignments between each of our tokens in our request and all of the areas that they are potentially used in. Um, so to speak, we want to find all combinations of all areas and all tokens, for example, Neo4j and consulting and Neo4j and skills and then count the number of assignments of each of these combinations. We need this number to calculate the conditional probabilities, for example, to see area consulting given the term Neo4j. As we want to find all of the combinations of tokens and areas, we unwind our token list before. So here we have one line for each of the combinations of our two areas, which we had here, and each of the tokens in the request. We then find each of the tokens in the graph by, with this work, con work condition here and then match to each of the areas and then return the count token area as the, assign the number of assignments. To make this clear, I would um, um, run the query here to give you an idea what it's doing up on up until this point. We get all the combinations of the areas and the tokens together with their assignments. So workshop is used in skills only once, Neo4j is used in skills zero times, workshop is used in, new, um, in consulting two times and so on. And we also have here the, the size of the area and also the total count. And as you can see, these are the numbers we need to calculate our recommendation score. Okay, in the next step, also something important happens because as we can see, workshop is used, uh, Neo4j is used zero times in the area skills. And as we are finally, like in the last step, we are producing a pure product. And if we had one zero factor in this product, it would pull our entire result to zero. And that we would like to avoid because all the other terms wouldn't have any effect on the score then anymore. So instead of putting the zero in this count token area, we would use a very small a, or a rather small number to calculate the posterior, which is our conditional probability. So in this case, we calculate the posterior with a, a point zero instead of a zero. And otherwise we just use the count, which we found earlier. All right, if we put all of this together, we end up at the last line where we can finally calculate the score. Now, instead of having all the combinations between areas and tokens, we pull all the tokens for one area into one line. So we basically, we group by this area and the aggregation function is the product of the posteriors as in our formula in the last slide, and then multiplied with the probability for this area, which is the count of the area, so the size of the area, divided by the total count. For example, for area consulting, this would be 9 over 14. And here we have the posteriors, which I also collected here for um, debugging reasons. Now, if we execute this entire query, we see the result, for example, area consulting um, collected two posteriors for each of the tokens. And the final result is uh, 0.04 eight and for area skills we also have two posteriors the one is very small and we get 0 0.001 now what i didn't mention before we also order this result by the score descending so the first area will always be the most likely one 
which is going to be the one that we are going to recommend to the user. Okay, now if we change the input here, so for example, we put here um, workshop and salsa, we would expect the skills area to be recommended. And if we ex execute this query again, we see that skills has a, a, large, uh, a much higher score than the consulting area in this case. So that's exactly what we, what we would have expected. Now, as you can see, the query is not too long. It's not complicated. It's pretty straightforward to understand and you can run it in real time. And that's what I would say is also the greatest benefit of, UV, of using a such a simple approach as a naive Bayesian classifier for giving recommendations in Neo4j. And that's it. It's a very simple Cypher query. And as promised, it's just a handful of lines of Cypher and we run it live in production as the user interacts with our front end. Even though it's such a simple approach, it yields very, very promising results. And we even compared it to a deep neural network with a word embedding layer. And they actually provide the very same results on the same input data. It saves us a lot of hassle compared to running, maintaining and developing very sophisticated external systems just to give these recommendations by running them in our already existing graph database. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you could take away something from it. And I hope you can see the beauty in the simplicity of this approach. If you like this video, hit the like button below. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. If you have comments, leave them in the comments and stay tuned for the next video. See you then. Bye. Bye.